I'm Craig from Carshalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2016 Expert Curriculum. Download the file linked in the description and let's work through things together as we begin reviewing Section 2.1, Custom Data Formats and Validation. Let's get started. I find custom formats a whole lot of fun, and there's so much to them. We could have a whole video series that solely goes over different techniques of using custom formats. What I've tried to do is go through what's in the textbook and come up with some, uh, I guess, some simple examples that will hopefully give you the confidence that you'll be able to experiment a little bit and uh, come up with your own custom formats that will start solving problems in your current work environment. So let's take a look at what we have here. Now you can access the standard formats from Excel through the ribbon. By expanding it here, let's take a look at our Home tab. And you can see here are the standard formats uh, that, that you have access to. Uh, you can get a little bit more detailed by selecting some of these particular categories, and, and Excel will give you a few more options. But beyond this, we can actually build these right from scratch. Uh, and we can do that using our keyboard. The easiest way is just by hitting Control-1. And when we hit Control-1, it comes up with our format cell. By going now Alt-C, let me get back here, uh, Alt-C, uh, we can then go down to the bottom where it says Custom. Once we get into this area of the dialog box, we can actually start typing in, uh, and Excel will provide results that are exactly what we want. So we'll go through what all these different symbols mean and how they are going to apply in giving you the format that you want. So when we take a look at custom syntax, uh, how we divide things up is with the use of a semicolon. And what we have in our syntax is the Format for a positive value is the first section. For a negative format or a negative number, how it will be formatted happens after the first semicolon. How the zero behaves is after the second semicolon, and how text is formatted is after the third. Now, if we just have a single value, uh, it'll treat them all the same, whether they're positive, negative, otherwise. Um, so really, the additional categories in the syntax are, are optional. We don't have to use them. Uh, and then there's three common symbols that we're going to be using um, most frequently. So the first is the pound symbol. And what the pound does is it holds a place for the digit in the syntax, but it doesn't display anything if no number is entered. Now, this is probably a little uh, confusing or counterintuitive the first time you look at it, but uh, effectively that uh, pounds symbol or octothorpe, it, it's really to help you in in setting up where you want your formatting markers to go. So whether you want commas, dollar signs, decimal points, the, the pound sign helps you space those out properly. We'll go through examples that will show you the difference between them. There is a zero character. And when you use the zero character, what happens is it holds a place both for the digits. And if nothing's entered, it actually will display a zero uh, if it's blank. Third, there's the question mark. Now the question mark will hold this place for a digit, and if there's no digits there, there's actually a space left. Now one key thing to remember with custom formatting is that the actual numeric value doesn't change. The display is independent of what's actually there. So we can add together numbers that maybe don't, don't look right, but we'll still get the right value or the value that Excel is using to calculate with. So let's take a look at some of the examples that we have prepared here. All right, so let's expand that open here. All right, the first number we're going to look like at is this number 25. So this column here is the, the unformatted number. This is the custom formatting that I'm applying. And over here on the right-hand side is the result that shows how it is going to appear. And so again, to do this, what I've done is if we go Control-1, Custom, so you can see that this format, this 0, pound, 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 is what I've entered in over here in this area of the dialog box right here. So I won't go through and show you each of these, um, but know that that's what's there. I just have it here on display for you. All right, so if we enter the number 25 here, and this is our format, if we remember, we'll go up a little bit here. So the pound symbol just holds a place for the digit, but nothing happens if no number is entered. So we have a zero, which does get displayed, and then three pounds. So we'll notice here there is a zero and then a 25. Uh, now, if I change this 
to 250, we're still going to have a zero at the front. So that extra space uh, that the pound sign is there, it doesn't really make much of an impact. If I go to two, I'm still going to just have that zero and that two. We can go back to 25. The zero stays there. 250, we still have the zero. What if we go to 2500 will happen? Well, let's find out. That zero is going to disappear. And we'll just have the four digits that we see. So the, the, the pound symbols are just to set the space, the spacing of where that zero in the display format is going to be. So let's go back to 25. So now in row 12 here, if we type in 25 and our format is four zeros, there is always going to be four digits of zeros here. So basically thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones are always going to be a zero if this is blank. So if we, uh, if we clear this out, there's our four zeros. If we go to a two, it's going to show one, two. Let's go 25, 250. Oh, 25, 50. There's 250 and then 2,500. So you can see how those zeros get displayed until I effectively bump them out of the way with a number here in my, my uh, column F. So let's go back to the 25. Now when we go into row 13, we're going to see the effect of the question marks. So now if we remember a question mark holds a place for the digit and displays a space if there's no digit entered. So in this case, with 25 entered, we're going to see a zero. And then there's going to be three spaces for digits that we enter here in row F. Now, we've only used two of them. So when we look at the result, we're going to see the zero. We're going to see an empty space and then our 25. Now, what do you think will change if we change this just to two? Well, if you guess that there'd be a zero and two spaces and then a two, you would be right. Let's check that and see. Sure enough, there is our two spaces in our two. What if there's nothing here? There's a kind of a floating zero and then three spaces. So there's our two. Here's our 25 where we started. What about 250 will happen? Well, the zero will stay there in front, except the space will be gone because it's going to get bumped up by 250. Now, lastly, when we go to 2500, uh, that leading zero will disappear on us. And there it goes. So that gives you a little bit of a flavor of how those different uh, wildcard uh, values are going to impact what your format looks like. So we'll go back to 25 here just to keep things consistent. All right, so now in row 14, what we've done is we've added into our format a decimal point. So uh, what's happening here? Well, the, again, the pounds don't really impact the, the, the spacing or the layout, but what they do force is the decimal spot as well as a zero. So what's happening now is there is always going to be at least one value to the right of the decimal point. Now what that value is is going to depend on what we enter. So right now I've entered a 25 and this is showing 25.0. If I enter 25.1 what's going to happen? Well Again, I'm always going to have a zero on the right-hand side once, as long as there's tenths and hundredths. Once those are filled in, those that zero is going to disappear. So when I hit enter, there'll now be a 25.10 over here on the right. There we go. If I want to get rid of that zero, let's go to 25.11, and it'll disappear. Now, if I again, we just go back to 25, there's always going to be one zero showing up. Now, in our second example, I forced there to be two zeros in display all the time. So if we go to 25.1, oops, 25.1, I'm still going to have that extra zero uh, at the end. Uh, in this case, they're going to look the same. If we go to 25.11, there we go, 25.11. The big difference is if there's no decimals entered. In this case, we have one space. In this one, we're going to have two uh, zeros to the right of the decimal point. Lastly, what we're going to, or not lastly, but next, we're going to show the impact of a comma. So again, if there's no values here, the the pound symbols are just going to, you know, have no impact. What they're doing though is telling us or telling Excel where we want the comma to show up. In this case, we want it to show up three from the right in our thousands position. So if we have 2,500 here, 
Once that formula is applied, we're going to see it this way. If we go to 250, that comma is going to disappear for us. Same thing with 25. So if we go 2500, there's our decimal point again. And uh, so this is a fairly common numeric format. But again, there's no spaces held because of the pounds. If we added zeros or question marks, it would display some leading uh, digits or a, a space for us. Now, we can add in uh, these kind of typical numeric formats. We can also select what we want for uh, a text color. Now, there's, I believe there's eight standard text colors that you can just use by name. In this case, we've used red. Uh, and you'll notice when we look at the format here, I have a semicolon. So what's to the left of the semicolon is going to be a positive number. And what's to the right is going to be a negative number. So if we take a look here, uh, our positive numbers are just going to be normal. So if I go up to 250 here, nothing is going to change. There's not going to be any commas or anything entered. It's just going to be a normal value. However, to the right of the semicolon, we have what happens if the number is negative. So two things are going to happen. One, it's going to have the text color red. Second, it's going to be inside of brackets. All right, and the default uh, would be just to show, like you, like you see right here, uh, a minus sign in front of the value. So in this case, we have 25. Over here, it looks like 25. As soon as we change this to a negative number, now over here it displays as a, it's going to be red text in brackets. And so that's just a, a, a handy way that negative values are going to show up faster for you, and, and you'll be able to spot them uh, in a quicker, easier way. Uh, let me just check and see if I carried this formatting all the way through. Okay, let's go to minus 25. So sure enough, yeah, it's the same formatting in both places. If I change this to 25, it's going to flip into the black color again for us. Again, now you can check these custom formats. Uh, again, by highlighting this cell, hitting Control-1, uh, custom is highlighted, and we can see here that this is uh, the selected custom format. So there's our, our pounds, our semicolon, red, and uh, the value here. Now, if we wanted to, we could change this to blue. I believe blue is a color here, uh, and click OK. And so now our negative numbers are going to be shown in blue ink instead of red. Our second one is still in red. And uh, so you can set it up whatever is, I guess, uh, normal or, or usual, uh, wherever you're working at. Uh, for me, I typically like having my negative values in red. So now that we have these basic building blocks, we actually have a whole lot of power and flexibility. So I've, I've included a couple of more advanced examples for you here. So let's take a look at these. All right. So... Uh, when I'm working, I like to have a base unit of one. So when I'm in a in a workbook, um, I want to have all the digits entered in, but I don't necessarily want to display them. I know some workbooks that I've worked in, um, they'll have base unit will be thousands. Some of them will have base units millions. Uh, and, and I understand why people do that. But what I've found is that if you have different values on different tabs, so if, let's say one tab you're working in millions, the next tab you're working in thousands, you may run into a situation where you have to take the values from one tab and add them to another one or multiply them. And if you forget the different units, you end up in a situation where um, you know you, you get really invalid results because of uh, the order of the magnitude is much different. So what there what I've used or what I frequently use now is a display value. So I can still enter in my values. So for example, like in these two cells here, I've added this this number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I can choose how I want it displayed. So if I were to type that in, I can actually have it display in a thousands format. And, and what I've done is, so, so now that value is 1,234,000.6. So it takes up a little bit less room. And I have a K at the end, so I know that it's in thousands. Next, I've used a million format. And so it's actually telling me that it's 1.23 million. Because, you know what, those, the rest of those numbers may not be material for me. I could also do this with billions and have a B at the end. So how I've done this is, again, by using... A custom format here. So in this case, 
we have the pound symbols and a comma and then a decimal point. So this is telling Excel that we want to uh, have this at the thousands point. In our next one, what we've done is added two commas here. And so that's telling it instead of thousands, it wants it in the millions position is where the decimal point is going to be. Not only that, it's always going to show me two decimal points and display an M at the end. Uh, in this case, we only want one decimal point, and then we're going to display K at the end. Now, I've included these in the workbook for you if you want to use them in your own work. Uh, and then you can check the style thousands and the style millions up uh, here in your, excuse me, up here in... Um, your home area in the style section. So if we look at cell styles, uh, we have thousands and uh, you'll have millions in there as well for you. There's our millions right there in green. Now, let's say you were wanted to use gigabytes or terabytes. I've set this up when I've been doing some work for uh, calculating storage, and, uh, and we've used those values as well. So whatever you want to use as a base unit, you can adjust uh, and, and so it displays in a value that's simpler for you. And, and like I said, I can add these two numbers together and Excel understands what's behind the scenes there. So if I just equals that and that, I'm going to get the, the full value. It, it, it understands all the different places and keeps them all laid out. Now, if I wanted to, I could uh, paint the same formatting down here. So now it displays uh, in the same format as one of those two. So we've seen some numeric examples. Uh, let's take a look at, and see how this impacts time and date. So we'll expand this section here. So I've, I've copied this out of the textbook um, just to, to give us a little bit of a reference point. So the, the first one we're using, I've entered a few times here. And uh, so if, if this is what's entered and this is what the custom format is, this is the display that's going to show up. Uh, so and and right now I've just copied that over. But if I just type this in here, 905 and hit enter, sure enough, it's only showing me the the hour. Okay, so a single H shows us an hour without a leading zero. In this next row with two H's, we again get just the hours, but we get a leading zero. Okay, if, so if that makes it uh, a little bit simpler for you to understand, or or the the final user of your workbook to understand. Uh, next, we're going to play around with the minute display. Uh, so a single M gives us a, a number of minutes. And uh, in this case, not having the leading zeros makes it a little bit confusing. Uh, so why don't we just adjust this? I'll hit Control-1, and I'll change this to just a single M. And OK, it's going to go to months, so that's why I have the two H's here. Um, all right, so that's showing six minutes. Now, we haven't gone too much into time or dates yet, but we will later on in the course. Uh, so this value over here is the, the decimal equivalent of six minutes. And uh, Excel treats the unit one as a day. So if I just enter one, Excel's going to think that's 24 hours equivalent to one day. So what I've done here in the formula bar is I've taken that one day, I've divided it by 24 to get hours, and then I've taken the hour and divided it by 10. Okay, so I've divided an hour into 10 parts. Well, 10 parts of an hour, each of those parts is going to be six minutes long, which is what's showing here. Now I've used that same number in row 26, but this time I have a double M in my custom format. And so now it's showing me a 06. And to me, this is a more intuitive way of understanding that it's six minutes. Next, we have seconds. And so I've effectively done the same thing here with seconds. So this is the decimal equivalent of two seconds. And so what I've done here is I've taken that one day, divided it by 24 for hours. I've taken and divided those hours into minutes, which is 60. And then I've divided those minutes into 30 parts. So if you take a minute, divide it into 30 parts, well, each of those parts is going to be how many seconds? Well. Excel's done that for me, and that is two seconds. Now, later on again in the course, we'll, we'll work a little bit more with time and dates and, and how we can convert uh, numbers into dates and, and hours and minutes and seconds and how Excel works with all those. In this case, we're just displaying them. So with two S's, we now show zero two. 
So that may be a more uh, appropriate way for you to display that value. I can also display a number whether it's AM or PM. So in this case, I've typed in 2100, okay? And uh, in this case, it's showing that, hey, um, with just this format, AM, PM, it's just telling me that that is a PM number. It doesn't tell me how far into the PM or AM it is, just that it's PM. Now, if I want to display the whole time, what I've done is I've added hours and minutes and then the AM, PM. So now 2100 uh, is 9 PM. So Excel has calculated that, that for, or not necessarily calculate, but is displaying that for us in a more intuitive way. So let's take a look and, and see what we can do with dates. All right, so we have a few date examples here. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is a single D. And a single D is just going to give us the, the day number and, and no leading zeros. Okay, so in this case, here's our date. So this is for, for me is a little bit in the future. Uh, when you watch this, this may be well in the past. Uh, but in this case, if we type in this value, it's just going to show us that the day number is five. It's the fifth of the month. doesn't tell us which month. Uh, next line is going to actually show us um, with a leading zero, which may make more sense in your display. But effectively, what's behind these, what's been entered in, is this value here. If I use three days, or excuse me, three Ds in my formula, it's actually going to give me the three-digit abbreviation of the day. So it's telling me that this is a Saturday. If I use four Ds, it actually spells Saturday all the way out for us. And, and now, again, this is just the display. What's, what's actually in the cell? So I can type 1 slash 5 slash 2019. I've got a double slash there, so let me fix that. It's Saturday. So even though when I look in the formula bar, it's showing the full date, all it's displaying, again, with conditional formatting, it just changes what's displayed. It doesn't actually change what's actually in the cell, the value that's in the cell. So we can do a similar thing with months. Uh, so this is saying it's the first month. Again, the first month with a zero. Well, three M's now gives us the short abbreviation of the month. Uh, next, four M's gives us the full month spelt out just similar to how it worked with days. Two Ys is going to show us just the, the last two digits of the year. So in this case, it's, you know, you might think of it as 2019, it's just 19. Or with four Ys, it'll display the whole year value. All right, so so we've, we've kind of gone through a few of these examples. Now, if I wanted to, now here is, here is the day as we would, I guess, normally or more frequently see it. This is actually the numeric value. Uh, that Excel is thinking of or, or is using to calculate on this particular date, January 5th, 2019. If I was to add 1 to that and go instead of 470 to 471, it would now be January 6th. But what if we wanted to display instead of this or this this number, what if we just wanted to, the, the, the day's name, the month's name, uh, what day it is, and the year in our cell? So let's uh, see if we can create a custom format, which will do all of that for us. So I'm going to hit Control-1 to do my custom formatting. We'll go down to Custom. I'll tab in. And we're not going to use what's there. Uh, instead, what we want to use is the day name. So our day name, to get the full day name, so just like this Saturday here, we want to use four Ds. So let's go D, 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 D. We can see in our, our preview up here that, OK, this is Saturday. Uh, the next thing we want is the month name. So we want Saturday. I'll do a space. And now we want the full month name, which is going to be four M's. One, two, three, four. You can see it being created up there. So it is Saturday, January. 1D will give us the fifth. And uh, let's do a comma. And then the year. Four Y's for the year. Let's hit OK. And so now... What's being displayed is that this is Saturday, January the 5th, 2019. Even though when we look at the actual value in here, it's uh, it equals this or that original number that we had seen. 
All right, so that wraps up the first part of this. Uh, make sure you do the practice test for this one. They have some good examples for this. Uh, and, and again, they're not super intuitive, so you're probably going to have to iterate a few times in order to get them. I do have videos of all the solutions prepared for you if you do struggle. Uh, and uh, there will be questions on conditional formatting in, or excuse me, on custom formats on your exam. Uh, good luck, and I look forward to seeing you in part two of this section.